Uh, his name was Stuart Hamblin. And about 1950, give or take a year maybe, Billy Graham had a big crusade in Los Angeles. That's, that's back when Billy Graham had his head screwed on stage. Yeah. And uh, this man went to the meeting just out of curiosity. It was multi week long. He went to the meeting out of curiosity and ended up getting saved. And he, he had a daily program, live music, the whole nine yards. And he went back to his job there at the station and gave his testimony and just he's a totally new guy. And uh, they started leaning on him a little bit because he was becoming a fanatic. And uh, he wrote songs too. And he wrote one, his first one I think, and it was, uh, it was a little bit like what you'd expect from a lost man that had just gotten saved and composed a song. It was based on the 12th chapter of uh, Ecclesiastes where it says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth when the Evil draw, uh, evil draw something in the days draw nigh. It uh, anyway, I can't remember it exactly, but Solomon, in writing that, is urging Christian or people, the, the Jewish people, to do to live for God in their youth and don't waste it until it, you're too old to do anything. And he compares the aging human body to an old rundown, worn out house. You've all read that. And this guy, Stuart Hamblin was his name, by the way. He, uh, he wrote this song called This Old House. It was along that line. And uh, it, if I'm not mistaken, it went to number one on the charts pretty quickly. You could make religious songs back then and people would listen to them. Anyway, he finally got fired from his job because he was such a religious fanatic. He kept on writing, writing songs and, and you could see the evolution of his songs getting more and more like they ought to be. And this is, as far as I know, this is the last one he wrote. It may, may not be, but it's, it's all done until then. <clears throat> My heart can sing when I pause to remember A heartache here is but a stepping stone Along a trail that's winding ever upward This troubled world is not my final until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Until the day God calls. Um... 
Alright, if you have your Bibles, turn to get Revelation chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 5, not chapter 6. Revelation 3, Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> Alright, tomorrow's New Year's. New Year's Day. New Year's resolutions. <laughs> so, I thought I'd read some of them. These are the resolutions that people make. Probably never heard these before. These are all brand new ones that nobody's ever tried. Number one, lose weight, get in shape. <laughs> I'm already in shape. I am in shape. <laughs> Number two, eat better. Number three, spend time with their family. Number four, quit smoking. You know, I was writing these down. I was telling Beth, I said, you know, I don't think I've, I've read a list yet where it says one of my ten, or one of my New Year's resolutions. I'm going to start smoking. I'm going to start drinking. I don't tell you right there, it's wrong. <laughs> Quit smoking. Uh, number five, get out of debt. Save money. The next one is learn some new hobby. Get organized. The next one is enjoy life. They just don't know, do they? No, sir. Enjoy life. That's what we talked about in Sunday school this morning. Enjoy life. Travel more. <laughs> Traveling is going to make you enjoy life. Man, if you're on an airplane, it ain't. <clears throat> Stop drinking. Not if you start traveling. You can start drinking. <laughs> Sit in an airport. And then the last one is be happy. Be happy. That's things there that this world wants. And you can get them. You can have them. God said our exceeding precious promises will give them to us. Alright, Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, the Bible says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Alright, I'll just stop for a second there. Now who's he talking about? He's talking about the Laodiceans, bro Jack. Yeah, he's talking about us. Amen. Amen. You're neither hot nor cold. What that is, that's extreme. Something good. Something cold. Nice cold drink in the hot, and when it's in the summertime is good. Hot chocolate this morning when it's 16 degrees would have been good. Yeah. Hot or cold, God wants you to be doing something that's going to affect something good. And God, here's what He says. He says, the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art luke 